Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again, and welcome to another review. And in today's video, we're gonna check out Ubuntu 1904, the Disco Dingo release, which was just published this week. And I definitely wanted to give you guys my impressions of this. I've been using it uh, basically since beta. So I wanna give you guys my impressions and also let you know whether or not it's worth the upgrade. So let's go ahead and check out the Disco Dingo. So strange release code names aside, here we are on my System76 Lemur. It's an older machine, but you know, still pretty good. It's an i7 with an SSD, so can't really complain. And what you're seeing right now is the very first screen that you see when you first sign into a fresh 1904 installation. It's given you an option of setting up some of your online accounts. So right here you see Google, Nextcloud, Microsoft, and so on. So if you have one of those, you can go ahead and set that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that right now. And we have the typical screen where it's asking if you wanna basically help out and send some information to Canonical. So why not? I'll go ahead and do that and click Next. Get to set your privacy settings. And on this screen, we see that we can install some popular applications. We have Bitwarden, Spotify, Slack, Sublime Text, and so on. So this is really useful if you wanted to get up and running quickly. So some of the applications like Slack and Visual Studio Code, for example, are really popular in the workplace. So if you're using Ubuntu 1904 for your job, for example, you can get up and running with the applications that you use pretty quickly. So that's definitely a very welcome thing to see as well. So let's go ahead and try that out. So I'll just click on Slack and I'll click Install. Should be pretty straightforward. So I'll put in my password here. And then we could launch it. And there we go. So I think it's great that Canonical is making it easy for users of 1904 to get up and running with their favorite applications. And sure, this feature isn't actually new in 1904, but it is one of those things that I do enjoy because you know, while it's the case that not every application you'd want to run is going to be on that one screen, there are quite a few choices there to get you going. And then you can simply check out the software uh, application to install anything else that you may want to have running on your machine. So I'll go ahead and close this. And basically what this did when we clicked on Slack is it actually brought us into the software application, which you see is right here, Ubuntu software. And if I click this left arrow here, it takes you back to the main page. So of course you can get to that from here as well. And you can check out other applications beyond what is actually shown here on this welcome screen. So I'll click done here. And we have different categories. So beyond what shows up in that screen, for example, I can click on games. For games, we have quite a few options here. Chromium, BS is really fun. There's Super Tux and so on. So definitely should check out the games that are available here. And since today is April 20th, we also have Dope Wars here. Of course, that's just a coincidence, but you know, in case you wanted to um, celebrate and play a game, well, you know, there's Dope Wars, so I guess you could do that. But um, seriously though, there's actually quite a few games here. DOSBox is really good. I'm a fan of older DOS games like Wizardry, for example, so they're able to be run there, which is great. Extreme Tux, Racer, basically you could just click on this, and this is a fun game to install as well if you're interested, so there you go. And here, back here on the main screen, we also see that there's an updates tab, which I've already installed updates. I probably shouldn't have done that, but as of the release, as of today, there were about a handful of updates already, which is to be expected, but I already went ahead and installed those, so we're up to date, but if we did have updates, we would see that here, and we can then refresh to see if there's any new updates. So when it comes to new features, I feel like that's where this release breaks down. Now, I'm certainly not a fan of shedding negative light on something because I'll shout from the rooftops if something is good. And there's definitely some good about this release. But the question is, should you upgrade to it? And I think you already know my opinion given the title of this, of this video. But you know, depending on your use case and what you're looking to get from your machine, that ultimately determines whether or not this is a worthy upgrade for you. So what we're gonna do now is just take a look at some of the new features and then we'll just take a look at how this compares to other previous versions of Ubuntu, namely 18.04, and make the determination whether or not this upgrade makes sense for most people. 
So back here on the laptop, I'll go ahead and close this here. So right away, we see that visually, Ubuntu 19.04 is one of the best looking versions of Ubuntu that I remember. It's got a brand new theme and a brand new icon theme. Well, to be fair, the, the themes aren't new, but they're updated. So I'll just go ahead and open up the files window here. And we can see the new icon theme. So they went ahead and touched up the icon. So everything looks very, very professional. So whether or not you like the theme might depend on your preferred color choices. But even though these aren't my preferred color choices, I do have to admit, I think that everything looks good and everything looks professional. So when it comes to GNOME, which is what Ubuntu uses as its default desktop, it's my favorite desktop environment. I think anybody who's watched my channel more than a few weeks probably already knows that. But GNOME has, you know, a lot, it leaves a lot to be desired in the theme department. I mean, stock GNOME, the GNOME you get when you install it without a distribution applying a theme to it, its basic default theme just looks very vanilla and just not that great. So it makes sense to me why Canonical wanted to you know, put a fresh coat of paint on it because it's kind of required at this point. And I think that they did a really good job. So um, good on the UI developers at Canonical for giving us a great presentation of GNOME visually. I think it looks great. I mean, even the wallpaper looks pretty cool. I mean, here we have the disco dingo, him or herself, jamming to some music on some headphones. And I'm sure that the Disco Dingo is probably listening to Pink Floyd, but it is the Disco Dingo, so probably Saturday Night Fever. Either way, uh, the Disco Dingo is enjoying some tunes, but it just looks like a cool wallpaper. I think that's pretty neat. But if you don't like that, there are, of course, some additional wallpapers that you can actually choose instead. So a decent selection here, or you can actually just add your own just as easily. So. Overall, again, the visual appearance here is on point. I think that it's really great. And one thing I noticed right away is the speed increase. So let me go ahead and just open an application. And you can see that the application opens pretty quickly. I mean, yes, this is an SSD, so that's to be expected. And this release offers a speed increase because GNOME has had some adjustments and some refinements to make the animations faster and the response times faster. So opening LibreOffice is more a testament to the underpinnings of the Ubuntu OS, not necessarily GNOME itself. So I'll go ahead and close this. The animation speed of GNOME though is gonna be where we see most of the improvement. Everything is very responsive to me and I just feel like everything is snappier and just overall a very pleasant experience. So I think the main highlight for Ubuntu 19.04 is gonna be the speed increase from GNOME because, I mean, they even mentioned this in the previous release, um, you know, 18.10, for example, but I didn't feel like it was that big of a difference. Yes, it seemed a little bit faster, but they were basically shouting from the rooftops that GNOME is faster now, even though it really wasn't. And, but in this release though, I feel like it actually is faster. I really do notice a difference. Everything is a lot more responsive. However, I feel like if you're using GNOME on a computer already, then that computer is capable of handling GNOME and probably runs just fine. On all of my computers that run GNOME, I never had a problem with performance. I never sat down and thought, man, this release is so slow or anything like that. Everything has always been very responsive for me. So uh, as much as I love having a you know, performance boost, that alone doesn't make it worth the upgrade. Because if your computer is you know, really old and has some really slow hardware, this performance boost, while great, is not gonna be big enough to make GNOME run on a computer that it already wouldn't have ran on. So that isn't going to be much of a benefit to most people, in my opinion, even though any speed increase is welcome. So moving on from there, of course, what else do we have in the release? Now, the first thing that is going to be um, something important to note is kernel 5.0. So if I open up a terminal here and just check out the version that we ship with, like I mentioned, it has kernel 5.0. Why does that matter? Well, there's all kinds of new features in kernel 5.0. It's actually one of the most exciting kernels in a while. And you know, you can go ahead and check out the release notes for that kernel if you want to. But you know, for gamers, for example, for me, it actually supports AMD FreeSync. So that's actually something that's amazing if you're playing games. 
and that's something you can actually benefit from. So your games might run faster in Ubuntu 1904, so that's definitely welcome. But then we go back to the main question though, is it worth the upgrade? So in regards to whether or not Ubuntu 1904 is worth the upgrade, what do I mean by that and why is it so important? So uh, basically, 1904 is not an LTS release. An LTS or long-term supported release is supported for three to five years, depending on which version you download. Now by supported, I mean it gets security updates. So if there's any security vulnerabilities, you'll get updates to fix those during your re you know, supported cycle for that release. Now with LTS, since that's such a, a larger amount of time, non-LTS is only supported for just nine months, it's usually recommended to stay on LTS. And my opinion is you should always stay on LTS with Ubuntu unless there's a feature that you just can't live without. Usually what is the case is that a non-LTS release will come out with a feature that's so great you just can't live without it. And that's just not the case here so far. So of what I mentioned so far, we have the speed increase of GNOME. And that's great. I think that's a welcome improvement, but it's not an improvement enough to justify sacrificing all those years of support. And then we also have kernel 5.0, which is actually a good reason to upgrade, especially if you're a gamer. You probably want the AMD FreeSync support if FreeSync is something that you would benefit from. However, not everybody has an AMD graphics card, for example, not everybody's playing games. But even if you are a gamer, the thing is, kernel 5.0 is going to be backported to 1804. So in just a few months, you'll get kernel 5.0. So if you just hold out a little bit longer, the one feature that Ubuntu 1904 seems to have that makes it actually a worthy upgrade is actually going to come to you in 1804 anyway. So that reason to upgrade to 1904 is actually defeated at that point. So um, should you upgrade? Well, so far it's actually not looking like it, but let's continue to take a look at the release and see what else it has to offer. Okay, so here on my screen, we have a look at the release notes here. So we could take a look at some of the things that they're highlighting. So of course we have GNOME 3.32. So if your goal is to get the latest version of GNOME, well, you know, you can definitely download 1904 and it will satisfy that goal. Fractional scaling, right here that's mentioned as a feature in GNOME 3.32. So that's great to have for those of you that would benefit from that. And then it's mentioning a new sound configuration panel. So if I was to go ahead and open up settings again, let's see what it's talking about. So let's go back to the front and we'll go to sound. And we can see basically how the sounds are laid out. So we have volume levels by application, and then we have the system volume. So essentially that means that it's laid out just that much better and easier to use. It's not like a, it's a new feature per se, but it's just laid out in a more intelligent way. But that's a GNOME 3.32 feature though. You'll get this feature in any distribution that ships with this version of GNOME. That's not Ubuntu specific, but it's still great to have. And another thing that it mentions here is that Tracker is now included by default. And Tracker is basically GNOME's file indexing service. And that means that it's included here by default. Normally that's something you would just install yourself later on if that's something you wanted to benefit from. And Tracker will index your files to make them easier to find during searches and things like that. And I have to say, I think that's a terrible idea. Uh, I don't know why they would do this because, I mean, yes, it sounds great on paper, right? You, you have Tracker installed by default. And as soon as you copy your files over to your new Ubuntu installation, it's gonna index those files to make files um, easier to find. That's all well and good, but in practice where this breaks down is the average person is going to wonder why their fan on their computer is going completely bonkers, which is exactly what will happen anytime Tracker indexes, and they're going to think that there's something wrong with the release. And yeah, of course, after a while, Tracker will, of course, die down after it gets caught up, but if you add a, a bunch of files and your fan goes crazy again, I just don't really think that's something that everybody's going to need. Now, I mean, to be honest, you know, there's all this emphasis in desktop environments and operating systems about faster searches and things like that. Um, to be fair, do we really have a problem finding our files? I mean, how many people save a file and forget where they put it? Yeah, I know it happens sometimes and some people are, you know, worse about that than others, but I don't really feel that the average person 
is that bad with their file system hygiene that we need Tracker installed by default, especially when it's going to sacrifice battery life, it's gonna increase your fan speed, and the average person, you know, the very person that this is for, the person that doesn't know where they saved something is also the type of person who isn't going, going to understand why their fan is going crazy and things like that too. So overall, probably not a good move on their part. But if that's something that you, you know, like to take advantage of, it's included by default. So that is one less thing for you to do if you were going to do that anyway. Now, one feature I really think is nice is this one right here, which I'm not able to show you because I don't have VMware. But what this means is if you're running this version of Ubuntu on VMware, it will automatically install the OpenVM tools package for you. And I think that's great because, you know, by default, Linux will run poorly in a VM unless you do have the VM tools installed. So if it's automatically detecting that and installing it for you, then that would hypothetically mean that you are gonna have better performance when you are running in VMware. So that's actually pretty cool. And I'm glad to see that they did that. There's a whole family of distributions based on Ubuntu. We have Ubuntu Mate, Zubuntu, Kubuntu, and others that have all received an update in 1904 and I wanna show you guys a few of those in this video because I don't feel like there's enough difference in those versions to justify them having their own video, but I do wanna make sure that I cover them. Now, before I do, I do wanna mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is the largest independently owned open source cloud company, and their platform allows you to quickly spin up your very own cloud Linux servers on demand. Whether you want to set up a quick Linux instance to go through one of my tutorials, or set up your own permanent infrastructure, Linode is a great solution. Speaking of infrastructure, dedicated CPU instances are now available designed for consistent high-performance computing needs like video encoding, game servers, and busy application servers. And if it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. All the popular distributions are available and you can run many operating systems on Linode in addition to what's officially supported. If you need assistance, live support based in Philadelphia is available 24 seven. I highly recommend you check them out. They're the provider of my cloud infrastructure. And if you click on the link in the show notes below this video, you'll get a $20 credit that you can use for your very own Linux infrastructure. So now let's go ahead and check out some other 1904 distributions that are based on Ubuntu. So here we are on Kubuntu 19.04, also part of the Ubuntu family. And what we have here is Plasma 5.15 as the desktop environment in this spin of Ubuntu. And we also have KDE Application Suite 18.12.3, which basically means you get the latest Plasma desktop and KDE applications. And taking a quick look around the release, we have the kickoff menu here at the bottom left corner. We can already see some of the applications that ship here by default. I'll bring up the case syscard here because that's gonna give us a look at the system load. And the impact of the Plasma desktop on the system is very small. I don't have any applications open right now, so you're basically seeing what the idle usage looks like on this particular machine. CPU usage is pretty low, and so is the RAM usage. So it is more of a lightweight desktop environment, maybe not the most lightest weight, but it certainly does run very fast and takes up fewer resources than uh, probably GNOME would take. So that's definitely a benefit there. And we have all the default applications that you would expect. Firefox as a default web browser and LibreOffice. For example, here we have version 6.2, and that's gonna be the case regardless of which flavor of Ubuntu you're using. Everybody in the family of Ubuntu 1904 has access to the same applications. So this is true across the board. And Firefox being the default web browser is of course true across the board as well. We have Discover right here, so I'll bring that up. And that allows you to install applications. So that's how you do that on the Plasma desktop in Kubuntu. So overall, it's a very solid release. It is awesome to be able to have access to the latest Plasma desktop, as well as the latest in the KDE suite of applications. But the downside here is that you also have the latest Plasma desktop and KDE applications in KDE Neon. So unfortunately, there's really nothing to differentiate Kubuntu from KDE Neon and is probably best avoided. But if you're looking for a brand new installation of a Linux desktop that features the Plasma desktop, then I would recommend you actually go with KDE Neon instead of Kubuntu. And here we are on Zubuntu 1904. 
This is the distribution based on Ubuntu that features the XFCE desktop. And the layout is very custom. If you were to install XFCE on any other Linux distribution, you would basically get a much different look and feel. So for example, they put the menu here at the top left corner. And then of course they customize the theme, which is actually updated in this release, which is great. It's not a drastic difference or anything like that, but it is good to see that they were focusing on the UI a little bit here. So you could basically get a feel for this distribution as we click through various menus here. But overall, this is gonna give you the latest versions of the XFCE desktop, which isn't really saying much, unfortunately, because XFCE does not change much at all. It's actually one of the desktop environments that have fewer releases or fewer occurrence of releases. And other than bug fixes, and things like that, you're really not gaining much for moving to Zubuntu 1904 that you wouldn't already have access to in 1804, which again is LTS. Here we are with Ubuntu Mate 1904. This is another one of my favorite distributions. It's not just because I like the color green, which this thing has no shortage of. I've always found it to be a very well-rounded distribution with a great presentation and some of the most polished that I've ever seen in a desktop distribution that isn't overpowering, it's not, they're not doing too much polish, but they definitely apply a really great theme and they add a bunch of new features. So uh, here we have the Mate desktop. This is version 1.20, more on that in a moment. But we click up here at the menu and we have, for example, a Mate tweak that we can go to that gives us different uh, panel layouts, for example. So if I want to be more Mac-like for some reason, um, I can just choose the Cupertino layout here, which uh, for some reason is not showing the panel up here, don't know why. But you just basically can click through these layouts, and I'm gonna go ahead and try a few others here. And you can see that it's changing how the panels are orientated, so you have basically full customization. You could customize the panels, and you know the file manager is actually a pretty decent one as well. The entire suite of applications you'd expect is here. You know, you have the Firefox browser, you have LibreOffice, you have everything from sound and video, you have graphics applications, and Thunderbird, Firefox, I mean, you just have uh, basically everything you could ever want. But there's also a minimal install in case you don't want all of those things and you just want to add the applications that you want. So it offers you a lot of customization and it's also another resource-friendly Linux desktop distribution. But what really bothers me about this release is that of all the spins of Ubuntu, this is the one that you should check out the least because it has the least reason to upgrade from a previous version. So I'm gonna bring up the release notes real quick and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. So first of all, the thing that they mention here is that you're getting Mate Desktop 1.20 and not 1.22, which is the latest. And I understand why they're doing it. It's because they wanna make sure that it's stable. I get it. Stability is very, very important. I certainly wouldn't want them to include something that wasn't going to be stable because it already has a few bugs to begin with. But that would be the only reason to upgrade to Ubuntu Mate 1904 would be to get a new version of Mate, but you don't get that. You just have the same one from the previous release. So that's gone. But in these release notes here, they mention a bunch of things here that you know, just are not actually exclusive to Mate and are not even exclusive to 1904. And they mention NVIDIA drivers have been updated, for example, but you know, that's true of any flavor of Ubuntu 1904. And you're also going to get those same NVIDIA drivers when the you know driver stack backports to 1804. So you'll still get that. So that's not unique to this release. And if I scroll down here, they have this, or they mentioned this little applet here that allows you to switch your graphics if you have switchable graphics. I've seen that in a previous release, so that's not exclusive here either. There's a new Mate dock applet, which very well may be exclusive, and remote desktop awareness is pretty neat because what that means is if you're using a remote desktop solution to control your machine remotely, it's going to change the behavior a little bit, which I think is smart, and I'm glad to see that's a thing here as well. When we go through these applications, they're mentioning you get the latest Firefox and Thunderbird. Well, 1804 also gets the latest Firefox and Thunderbird, so that's not unique. LibreOffice version 6.2, that is unique, but you can sideload that in any version, so that's not a reason to upgrade to this one either. And here they're mentioning that 
Linux kernel 5.0 is a highlight of this release, but it actually isn't because 1804 is going to get that anyway. So even though they're saying that's a noteworthy feature here, it's totally not because everybody will get that in 1804. So again, there just doesn't seem to be much of a reason to upgrade. And in fact, I would say Ubuntu Mate has the least reason to upgrade of any of the spins of Ubuntu 1904 that I've used so far. So Ubuntu 1904 isn't all bad. I know that I am mentioning several times that there's just not a reason to upgrade. The reason whether or not you upgrade is yours. Maybe there's something here that you just can't wait, even something that's going to be backported to 1804. Maybe you want to take advantage of, you know, Linux kernel 5.0 right now. But overall, you know, I just have to say that Ubuntu 1904 and its entire family is one of the most disappointing releases of Ubuntu ever. I mean, yes, you do get that speed increase with GNOME and that's great, but like I mentioned, it's not such a huge difference that it means that you're gonna to wanna to sacrifice years of support. Again, non-LTS releases are supported for nine months, whereas LTS releases are supported for at least three years, depending on your version. So if you're on 1804 right now, then I recommend you stay there. There's just no feature whatsoever in Ubuntu 1904 or any of its associated flavors that are it's reason enough to upgrade for. So I recommend you stay on 1804. Now, if you're on 1810, which is also a non-LTS release, then upgrading to this one is a no-brainer. You'll only benefit. You're not gonna benefit very much because there's really not much here that's even worth talking about, but you will get the latest versions of all of your applications right away and you don't have to wait. So if you're on 1810, definitely upgrade. You won't regret it, you'll only benefit. But other than that, I really feel like Ubuntu 1904 is a distribution to avoid. If you're looking for a distribution for your laptop or desktop, I highly recommend you check out 1804 in any Ubuntu 1804 flavor. You know, in this video, we went over Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Ubuntu Mate, for example. And uh, all those are available in 1804, so you can definitely download those. You're probably not gonna notice much of a difference because there isn't really much of a difference. So I recommend that you check out 1804. If you're already on 1804, stay on 1804. And hopefully the next release of Ubuntu will be better. Now, I understand that the Ubuntu developers are doing a lot of hard work here. It's not to say that they're just, you know, sitting down doing nothing. That's totally not the case. They're working really hard to prepare for the next LTS release. And every benefit we see here will actually be in the next LTS release as well. So their hard work is preparing for the next version of Ubuntu that's an LTS. So regardless of whether you jump on board with 1904 right now, or you wait until the next LTS release ships, you'll still benefit and get all of these features plus a lot more. So I definitely want to say I appreciate the developers and the hard work that they're doing, and the work that they're doing is extremely important. It's just from a user standpoint, there's nothing that benefits the end user because you just don't get any benefit from upgrading whatsoever. And in fact, you get less because most of the features that are in the newer versions will be backported to 1804, so you'll still get that too. So let me know what you guys think of Ubuntu 1904 or any of its associated flavors, and I will see you in the next review, which I should have uploaded very soon. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below, and there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.